patter, 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 some more patter, some extra patter for you. That sounds weird when you say it enough times. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, Twitch now shows, as you can see, that I am live and streaming. Um, it does tell me I was, well, it told me I was hosting UK Irin, wonderful person, you should go see her, um, in lieu of this stream, but I can, can't host people while I'm streaming. Um, and these are people who followed me, so I guess you didn't really need to know that. Uh, and we have the infinity effect going on again, which is again not useful to you. So uh, if you think the stream is not useful to you so far, um, it will not also not be useful to you later. So just 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 so you know. Okay. Um, sorry, wonderful things happen for me. Okay, we're actually going to continue what we had last time, which is in the replit where we're doing the helical rising, heliacal rising of stars. We're trying to find out when the stars, a given star, rises or sets with the sun. I'm going to add a little bit more into that, uh, and we're going to create an interface for that and publish it to GitHub pages so we can answer uh, the one of the questions on Stack Exchange that I thought was new, but it turns out is actually an old question. Nonetheless, that's just an excuse to do some programming. Okay, so over here we'd actually gotten pretty decent at this. We'd, we'd written a couple of functions. There will be no lines there. Okay. Um, and we've gotten as far as, uh, as finding the heliacal date of rising. I mean, not in a great way. We, it was basically we found what, you know, what day of the year it is uh, for this one star, Deneb. And it was 334, and we checked it with Solarium, and it looked good. Uh, but now, of course, we need to give uh, the dates in much better format than this. Um, and we could probably figure that out using JavaScript's time class. Um, but at this point, let's go ahead and give a, you know, build up a little bit of an interface so we can enter, even just as decimal numbers, right ascension, declination, and latitude. And we will, because this is an interface for you know, the average human person, we will go ahead and do that in hours, degrees, and degrees, not in radians, which is the correct and proper unit that everyone should have been using since birth. OK, so let's go ahead and create a the weird thing about this is we don't really need to create a form uh, because uh, JavaScript just listens for inputs. But um, sorry about that. Um, so let's not even bother to create a form. I don't think I think it's standard not to nowadays. Uh, so anyway, input type equals text, name equals um, actually I don't think we need a name. We'll call ID equals right ascension RA. And I think that's all we're going to do for right now. This is going to be very ugly, of course, for right now. But this is just so we can get this, this interface working. Uh, deck, and I think I'm going to put a new line between them. So, which, of course, is a BR. Okay. Now, let's just make sure that interface is coming up for us. And there it is, complete. Well, that would be a little bit too geeky, funny. Uh, let's go ahead and put the actual what they are in front of them. And I'm not going to put in like what the unit is because I want to improve this a little bit. This is, by the way, where something like React or um, other sort of tools to make things look nice would be really useful. And I kind of wish I knew them, but I don't. But if you're in chat, if anyone's in chat or whatever and does know these things, let me know because I would like to clean this up a little bit. This is a very ugly looking interface. And I guess we need a... Um, in theory, we could do this without a submit button, just every time someone changed anything, update stuff. I hate when sites do that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, type equals button and ID, I think we don't really care. We just need to be able to listen to it. Okay. So now... Oh, well, okay, maybe if we give it a, we, we'll give it a name. Um... Now, I'm pretty sure you're, some of you are going to be, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, value equals go, sorry. Okay. Now, some of you are going to complain that I don't have, I'm going to go ahead and close off my input tags, even though, I mean, we know you don't need to do that. But it is good, good habit, and I, I'm not too unhappy uh, with that. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's make sure it didn't break anything. Okay, so now we need to set up our listeners on the button, and we need to suck out this information and pass it on to the main program. Um, we could add that to script.js. I think I'm going to create a um, sort of a, a you know uh, another file called maybe listeners 
Dot.js or something, um, just for fun. And uh, let's see. I always forget how to do this. There's a way to add a listener to something. Um, I think it's just on click. I'm gonna let's just experiment, man. Equals. Um, I can't give it the same name as a built-in JavaScript function. Uh, do stuff. So I'm sure I haven't done this correctly. In fact, let's see if we get an error message here. No such function. Oh man. Okay, we don't. On click equals. Uh, I might be I might be overstepping what I know here. Um, and I've done this before, so we do have we do have examples where this will work. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do this thing that um, yeah, we'll keep this going. This we might need to. Oh, we'll keep it. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at um, some of my older code that I know does have this because we and some of it ha has been even a broadcast uh, my REPLs I just need to remember one that we did twitch waypoints I'm pretty sure has a uh, has a button in it as, as it must I mean um, otherwise you wouldn't be very useful would it um, not looking good so far so if I run it there we go uh, compute and I'm pretty sure that the listener is somewhere else which is fine that's fine. Uh, okay, and this is this is literally um, wow. This is literally actually a pretty good thing to do. All oh, right, and I keep forgetting that I am going to do my Pomodoro. Uh, I'm ignoring the first one because we just started, but every 20 minutes or so I will Pomodoro, uh, which means I'll get up, walk around, and come back. That's not very exciting. And I will actually try to get the bot, Nightbot, to um, to remind people that I'm doing that. So on the off chance they show up in the minute that I'm gone, two minutes that I'm gone, um, you know, they'll see a message saying that, hey, I'm, I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So we skipped that Pomodoro, but we'll do the next one. So this is actually, um, this whole thing is actually pretty good because it lets, it puts the... Um, the inputs in I mean the, the this whole thing ends up putting the inputs into an array uh, into a associative array and that is kind of nice if you're you know if, so you don't have to deal with the separate values I don't know if we're going to need that let's go ahead and just put this in right now control C we don't want to get rid of it from there and let's see how big is our script JS and it's big enough that I kind of uh, I mean, a lot of it is commented out and crap, but I mean, uh, let's go ahead and create a new file. We'll call it uh, listen.js. Okay, and it is pure JS, so I shouldn't have to, uh, don't have to put it in script tags. And of course, we do want to, this is getting way too big. I'm going to go ahead and push this over here. And of course, we do need to um, load it which should not be a problem. And I'm curious to see if we're going to get an error message that says, um, you know, update function not defined. Do stuff is not defined. Okay, awesome. So it is trying to do stuff. Uh, function do stuff. I'm pretty sure it takes an event. Um, and then we want to read the values of uh, basically, RA deck and latitude, um, which is else thingy value. Uh, let's see. Got to be careful here. Yeah, so we have to do document get element by ID and then get value. So, document get element by ID RA dot value. I don't know if that's going to work, actually. I don't know if you can do both of those at once. I mean, you should be able to, right? But this is JavaScript. So play. Result. Go. Console. Uh, okay, hang on. I probably need to rerun that. There we go. I am so spiffy. 
Oh wait, wait a minute, actually... Could I have done it with the on-click function? I think I could have. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, because it, it, it's more natural to me to have it JavaScript do the listening instead of sort of having HTML do the listening. I realized that sentence didn't make any sense. And I don't care. Button is null. What do we call it? Go or something? We we'll call it a button. It's a great name for a button. Button is null at. Mm, I need to script source these after I've defined stuff, don't I? Yep. That's. Can't listen for stuff I haven't defined yet. I mean, I can, obviously, but. It's silly. Go do some stuff. Be of be of good humor. Um. Okay. So maybe maybe I should have made a little bit of an effort here. To when you get into console log. Um. Do stuff. And I I'm pretty sure the event's not going to show up like fantastically great, but it should be enough for our purposes. Okay. And this just lets us know we've entered the do stuff function, so we know where our results are sort of uh, that change when we go do stuff, and then console log document. Um, see what bugs me here is this should actually, at the very least, print an error. Um, I'm it's a capital A, so I'm allowed to use it. I'm just going to tag this to see if this run this line runs at all, and if it does, what it's trying to print for um, for a value of ooh. Okay, so it it did work. Um, I just think maybe I can't quite do it this way. Well, and again, this is this is really where I'm going to beat my head against the wall. I'm going to keep trying to do this, even though there's a much I know I could just assign a separate var var variable to it. Let's see what this does. And I need to hit the button for magic to happen. Yep. Yeah. And... Okay. And of course, the right way to do it is... Uh, RAF, meaning the RA field, is document get element by ID. And then, let RA equals graph value. Oh, interesting. Is it node value? Did I do that wrong? I'm pretty sure it's just value. Um, yeah, it looks like just value. Interesting. Uh, all right, let's try it with just value again. Mm. Now what's weird here is it, it value doesn't seem to do node value. Um, okay, that that bugs me enough that I'm going to look to see if value is a function or something because I know it works from here. Um, Inputs map these things, and then um, it looks like it should just be value, man. All right. Well, if this works, I'll be unhappy. I mean, I'll be happy that it's working. Nope, didn't work. Okay. So. First of all, let's make sure it is RA. I'm sure it is, but let's see. ID equals RA. Um, I guess the... F excuse me. 
I guess the first thing to do here is to make sure that we are actually getting something for RAF. It should be a, um, uh, it should be like a document HTML type thingy. Uh, let's find out what it is. HTML input element. Okay, good. And then, well, now we're getting a null out of it. Um, <laughs> um, so why can't we get a value out of this sucker? I, I, I think maybe there's a step I'm missing somewhere. Um, okay. Well, that's... That broke stuff. Oh, I, sorry, I need to hit the button, don't I? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So there is a way we can var dump RAF, but I'm going to look at my code over here because I really, I think I'm making a very minor error. So what this does is LTX is equal to document get element by IDX. So this creates, uh, yep, that's what that does. Um, what does this do? Now see if you can define this for me. Um, x goes object x equals elements x value. Alright, so let's see if this actually still works. Maybe it's broken now. Nope, it appears to work. Alrighty. So... I mean, this looks like we're just getting the elements and then we're spitting out the value. So maybe something else is wrong here. Um, we're defining listen after we have the, the, um, these things defined. It does recognize it as a, as a, as a, a field, which is straight. Oh, oh, I'm a moron. I'm a freaking moron. And by the way, yes, I know that's on tape. And I know it's not tape. All right. Yeah, I'm getting the value of RA, and, but there's nothing in there. So it's doing exactly what I'm telling it to do. So put some crap in here. Now, there we go. I'm a moron. Of course, it needs the value of RA. Um, to actually put something in there. And we might put in a default value. Uh, or we might put in a better programmer. That would be really nice. Okay. Uh, let's do this, that, this. Nope, not that. Control C, Control V. And we'll call this the lat. Okay. Um, and now because we're doing um, hours for write ascension, we do need to fix this value to be uh, over, so this is it's in hours, so we want over 12 times math.pi. Uh, this is in degrees, so we want over 180 times math.pi, and latitude is also in degrees. Um, So now we have these in radians, as God intended. Um, now let's see, what functions... We need a place to put the output, and I might as well invent that place right now. It's just going to be... Um, vid ID. It's going to be div ID equals output. And then immediately followed by the end of a div tag. Um, okay, and I think what's vaguely interesting here, we can actually um, define this globally because we don't, we don't need to recompute it every time someone hits a button. Output, okay. All right, and that's not going to be a huge deal for right now. So now what we need to do with this, um, 
And let's just go real simple, pretend there's no refraction. Uh, oh, actually, I think we can give them all the results. There's th we can give them more than one result. Uh, so now we just need to call the function um, find helical date. Uh, and it's not going to give us the right answer. I mean, that's, that's it's going to give us a very funky answer. Um, oh, come on. Uh, I want to make sure it's the correct name of the function. Find heliacal date. I want autocomplete, you piece of shit. Find. Piece of shit. Um, and this is again wrong. Okay. All right, let's boogie down. Now, if I hit the button with nothing going on, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get, like, errors. That was interesting. Oh, I think it's just treating everything to zero then. Okay. RA of 12, declination of minus 5 here at 35 degrees latitude. Okay, cool. It is giving, it is giving not a useful answer, but an answer. Um... Now here we have a choice. We can either m a mess with heliacal date, which is really giving bad answers right now, um, or we can, you know, put all this stuff into do stuff. I think the heliacal date function doesn't really do what it's supposed to, so let's go ahead and tweak it. Um, star info function equals blah, 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 blah. Um, we do a bin search. And... Okay, hang on. Now here's where it gets interesting. Uh, we want to return the heliacal date for, n I mean, this is just sunrise assuming geometric. We want to allow for refraction and we also want to allow for civil, nautical, eh, I think I'm going to get rid of just civil twilight and not nautical or astronomical right now. So, um, okay, so we read so we need to redefine f each time. Um, okay. So actually, we might need to do better than this. Um, let star info equals because uh, we're looking for both the refracted star and the non-refracted star. We're going to end up returning an object, um, which I will go ahead and define here as an associative array. Okay. Okay, well, we can call this no ref. Oh, that's terrible. Unref. Meaning unrefracted. And then refracted. For refracted, we use the value of uh, the um, refraction at the horizon, I think, is accepted to be 34 minutes, but it could be 32. And I'm almost sure it's 34 minutes. Uh, standard value. 34 minutes at the horizon, yeah that. I did do the get on the other machine. Uh, this is of course in degrees, so we need to multiply it by divide it by 180 and multiply it by math pi. Okay, so that's the star refracted and unrefracted. Um, okay. Now we need to define the um, we need to find the, the rising, the setting, and the twilight rise and set. So this is going to be quite a bit of stuff that we need to do. And this is actually something we probably cannot put into... Well, we could put it into a loop, actually. Um, I mean we can rename the... F we can reassign the function each time, but we do need to... Um, 
we do need to keep track of the different results. So I'm, what I'm really not liking about this is it's it's taking too much um, room. Um, okay. All right. So let's see what Sun Info returns. Well, it returns the same thing Star Info does. Uh, rise and set. Uh, and uptime. Um, and I don't think we can actually use. Um, I don't think we can use those things separately, because this is a function that gets optimized. Well, not optimized. We find a zero for it. Okay. So this is actually okay. Kind of wish it was a little bit shorter because we're gonna have to copy it. Come on. B one line. Anything is one line if you have a long enough line. Okay. All right. So this is going to be. I've got to be very careful here. Um, don't give me suggestions. Okay. Res dot. Okay. So this is going to be rise without refraction. Unref. Unrefracted. Um, this is getting ugly. Um, so we can still uh, redefine F now, and this time it's going to be All right, Pomodoro time, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so now what we want to do is, I guess, find the... Um, yeah, let me make this a little bit less ugly, just because I want to be able to change just the part I need. Okay, so this is um, the set time. Uh, yep, this is going to be painful. In fact, this is going to be painful enough that I do want to loop it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and put a loop on it. All right, so we're going to loop um, refracted and unrefracted. Actually, refracted unrefracted um, civil twilight okay so for alt um, how do we use for each alt because I, I, I um, this is going to be an array I don't really need to uh, need to uh, uh, I don't really need to do a for loop in terms of JavaScript and this was my very disappointing. Uh, oh yeah, it's array for each, and, oh, shiny, 
Okay. Um, and the weird thing is, I think you actually have to say array for each. You can't actually apply it to an existing array. Um, and our, our values are going to be minus 6, minus 34, that's 30 minutes below. Uh, and 0, I think that's good. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah, and the sun... Okay, damn it. That's The values of the sun are going to be these three things. The values of the star... We only need two of them. There's no such thing as civil twilight from a non-solar star. Um, but the problem is, I think I now need to do like a map. Um, I'm not necessarily comfortable doing that. So let's... I'm going to wimp out. I'm going to create two arrays and then do a loop. So yes, I'm a terrible person. Um, there is, of course, also the question of where we're going to put this crap. Um, uh, I less than sun out length I plus plus. Or that j equals zero, j less than star out's length. Uh, j plus plus. It's a short loop, but it's still a loop. And then just because I am paranoid, let's make sure we get through all of those. Actually, that's not what I want. I want sun out's of i and star out's of j. All right. What if you make a cross product of arrays? You probably can. I'm not going to, but I'm saying you probably could. Whoa, okay. Aha! Yes. But we're going to get rid of that anyway, but for right now we'll just do that so it doesn't break. Um, that's not cool. Whoa! Too much recursion! That is freaking awesome! And it's supposed to stop at some point. Okay, and I kind of... I didn't expect this error to occur. I did expect some errors to occur with bin search because um, there are cases when... Where is bin search? There are cases when you could do some really weird stairs bin search. Okay, and it doesn't return bad binary search, which is the weird thing. Um, So the only problem here is it's possible that uh, the function we're looking at is not uh, continuous. That's what would cause this issue. Um, and we don't really need to know what the um, function is. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. All right, let's run this sucker and watch it burn. Okay, that's not what I meant. Kind of, kind of, okay, we'll wait. Okay, there's some action on my other machine, let me, on the machine that hosts this one. Let me see if I can kill it. Um, nope, it appears to be a virtual box, which we kind of need to run this. Okay. Alright, something's wrong here. Uh, we're getting a lot of slowdown here. It could be Replit. Maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, okay. We might have to do a reload here. Okay, actually, the, 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 the load on my main machine is getting kind of bad, so let's see if we can fix that. Uh, step one, do this. Step two, eh? step three, profit. That didn't really help. That's amazing. I killed a bunch of processes. And they did not behave. I mean, they did they did shut down, but 
I have other processes now that are being nasty. All right, hang on. Let me kill this. I know, I know you can't see what I'm doing, and and you probably don't care. Um, kill this, and oh, you can live for now, but we might have to kill you too. Okay, so I'm trying to kill off some processes. This eh, let's. See. I'm gonna go ahead and reload this page as well. Shift reload, in fact. Um, I think I've done something terribly wrong, but what's weird is. Uh, instead of giving me the error it was giving me earlier about too much recursion, which is which is a valid error, um, it now just seems to freeze. So I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about that. And the only real change I made, the only change I made, was to console log the binary search so we can so we can sort of see what 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 goes wrong here. Um, wow, we still have a lot of load here. Let me let me. Obviously, I can't kill OBS or VirtualBox. But the rest of you guys, don't get too damn confident. All right, let's see if this runs. Okay, running. Wow. Hello, hello, hello. Mike is clipping a little bit. I'm so sorry. Um, you mean it's too loud or too soft? Clipping in terms of the, the high audio or the low audio? Oh, okay, hang on. Is that any better? I moved the mic further away. Hopefully not so far that you can't hear me anymore, because that would be very silly. Okay. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can still hear me. Game is up too high. Lots of background, too. Oh, well... Let me see if we can kill off some of the background noise here. Okay, did that help kill off the background noise? I had a fan going, meaning a fanatic. One of the people who likes me was fanning me with the fan. So, a fan fan. I don't know how to describe it. I can listen to my own stream, but it creates a terrible echo. Um, Alright, I'm going to have to listen to my own stream, I guess. I hate doing it. I am very much opposed to doing it. I don't think I can do it here because I don't think I have audio working here. So if I do this, yeah, nothing happens for me. I mean, we see the wonderful. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and listen and mute. Uh, well, I'm going to listen and you're going to get screwed because you're going to hear echoes, but at least they'll give me some idea of what my mic is doing. All right. I'm on another machine which actually has sound, so you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, let me go ahead and turn, and then you're going to really hear what I'm doing because I'm going to get... Okay, I've muted my stream now and I'm about to talk to myself. This doesn't sound bad to me. Okay, I did listen to it, and it sounds, I mean, not great, obviously, but, I mean, part of it is, you know, my voice sucks, and the other part of it is, uh, well, I suck, in general, and I actually do have noticed that the quality of this microphone isn't that great. No, no, please, please, always torpedo. You're helping mankind by torpedoing my stream. I have listened to the recordings, and I, it is a little bit off, you're right. Um, this is a pretty cheap mic. I'm going to try to get a desk microphone so I don't actually have to um, wear... He I'm wearing headphones now for no reason because I'm not listening it with my headphones. I'm going to try to get a desk microphone and um, maybe it'll be better quality or it'll be far away enough or uh, something. I don't know. Um, so I will go ahead and go back right now to the stream. Um, if you figure out it's on your end, let me know. If you can sort of identify it better, let me know. Um, for right now, if you can hear me and understand me, I think I'm going to have to just live with that. I, think I, I, I don't think I can improve the audio beyond that. I would really appreciate your help, though, when I do get the desk microphone um, in testing it, but that's not going to be right now. 
Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Noise and clipping a little. I may have the gain turned up too loud. Let me turn that down, actually. That one, I have been told, is too loud. Um, let me... Okay, now I'm down at negative 20 uh, de decibels. I know how to say the word decibels. I'm now down at negative 20 decibels. Does it sound any better? More importantly, can you still hear me? Because I definitely need to, you know... Uh, I, annoying students is one thing. Not being heard by them is a different thing. They like that too much, so I like to keep talking. Um, so do let me know if it sounds better now, or at least that you can still hear... Okay, that's the same. Could be the mic. It's not a great mic. Um, this is Mike Jones, in fact, who is who is doing this for me. So, you know, Mike, uh, might have to break up with you. Um, okay. I'm looking on OBS. I mean, you can't see it, but I and I'm I'm down to minus 20 decibels for the microphone. Um, you know, hang on one sec. <coughs> Excuse me. Does this help any? I've turned off a source that has no audio. But, um, so it really should have made no difference at all, but this is, computers are magical, so I don't really understand how they work. Uh, so is it any better now? Still the same. Okay. One more try, and then I'm going to go back to coding. Okay, I've now turned it down to minus 30 decibels. Uh, can you still hear me? Have I just made myself softer? Um, what is a decibel? You know, because it's, it's a logarithmic unit of measure, I think which is weird because it still has the word deci in front of it, uh, which, which you know, is a metric, so just softer, still same. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and crank up the volume again to uh, minus 20 deberhertz, whatever that is, in decibels. Okay, so I guess if I'm going to be... All right, I don't know what, what is wrong, actually, to be honest. Um, I have all other audio sources turned off. Um... I mean, there's there's very little background noise now. In fact, I have like a little um, an app that tells me how much. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do that. That's always my favorite thing to do. Okay, I'm unplugging the microphone. About to plug it back in. Okay, plug back in now. How does it sound? I've probably gone totally silent now, which may have been your goal the entire time because. Let's face it, I same, okay. Um, all right, sorry. Uh, as long as I'm hearable, um, I kind of have to go on. One day I might, thank you. One day I might, um, I was actually thinking about this. I mean, I doubt I could get anyone to do it for free um, to voice overlay my streams with a different voice, one that, you know, doesn't suck. Uh, I But I doubt anyone's gonna do it for free and I think the, uh, the rates for doing voiceover uh, work are very high. Um, hire someone real time. Yeah, there you go. Hire some time real timed voiceover. Yeah, that would be like like closed captioning, but for voice. Um, plus, they'd have to somehow anticipate what I'm saying. Although technically, there is a delay between when I say something and the stream hears it. They could jump in in that delay. Um, I mean, they, we could do it. We could do it. We could put the stream on a delay, I think. Um, and then they could they could just, you know... There, there would be a way to do it, but the stream would be on a more of a delay than it already is. So, um... So, so just let's F it and continue going. Um, but I do appreciate let you letting me know. I can't do anything about it, but I do appreciate you letting me know. Okay. So previously on stream, we screwed everything up. Now let's see what we've done here. Okay. All right, so it looks like we've just basically created a huge binary search. Zero, zero. Oh, poopiness. I know what's wrong. One, we want to stop the binary search when F, A, and F, B are close, but if A and B are close, we, we might have to stop, we might have to stop the binary search anyway because, um, because we might never have hit a zero. Somehow we might have just gotten uh, not a zero. But let's see if we can, um, uh, let's see, return mid. All right, so let me go ahead and put in another console log that cal calculates uh, f, what f is equal to. 
Uh, so we have... There's something funky going on here. It's bugging me. Uh, F of A. Not the, not the audio stuff. Um, I mean, they do have um, closed... Ca not they do have closed captioning for live shows, um, which might not be a bad idea for, for this stream. Um, and they do have those people who interpret for the deaf, which would not be good for the stream because I hate deaf people, and they can't hear this, so that's okay. Um, but, but for other stuff, closed captioning, I think there are services that do closed captioning in real time, they're not very good though, and I don't think they work on Linux. So, two for zero for two. All right, one more time. Okay. Now, one thing that should probably bug me is I haven't hit the button yet, and yet it's trying to do some stuff. So I don't even know why it's yes. We'll wait. Why it's being called uh, for no reason? That's one. That's one issue. And of course, the other issue is that uh, that it's going to. Yes, I'll wait. Going into an infinite loop uh, for some reason, but not that infinite that it can't. It eventually does stop and tell me what's going on. Um, by eventually, of course, I mean not necessarily today or tomorrow, but you know, if we accept that time is infinite, at some point it will tell me. Okay, come on. Jesus effing Christ, how long are you going to run? And I might have, let's just stop it and see if it's got any error messages for us. Sometimes stopping in the middle gives us some of the error messages. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go Pomodoro myself, whatever that means. And we're back. I'm using the royal plural, of course. Let's see what happened here. Okie dokie. So the problem here is F is undefined, undefined, undefined. Okay. Um, that we can probably deal with, but why is it undefined? Um, oh, okay. We're actually calling uh, bin search from here, uh, which is why it's running, even though I don't have anything else going on there. Um, probably don't need this console log anymore. So I'll find here the echo date of denump. And let's see. So is it possible that star info... Hmm. And one issue, of course, here is we're actually not... Um, We actually don't necessarily need to run all the rest of this code, which might be doing bad things. Um, but let's find out. Okay, that so there's a couple of issues here we need to deal with. One is if we're getting undefined data. Um, we probably should not continue the binary search. 
so let's let's see if we can do that. Um, oh no, so A and B are defined. The function is not defined. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know if this is the correct way to check for undefined. And I'm definitely sure that we should put a different error message if this happens. Um, if I saw Optolinear, you, guy who's moving to Albuquerque, um, do you know if this is the correct way to check for undefined? Well, I'll just try it anyway. Good. Unless that ran really quickly, that is good. No, hang on. Did that just run really quickly and... Hmm... Not cool. Alright, well, JavaScript... Check for undefined. And I do realize I could use the uh, falsy operate the falsy value here. Um, but I, I don't really, um, okay, so it's type of, I guess, um, Maybe the problem with using falsy here is I don't I want zero to be okay, uh, so I guess this has to be type of. God, that's ugly. Um. All right, I'm unhappy with this, but I'm doing it. Not looking good. After we should probably stop this and um, we're gonna wait. We're gonna try stopping it from the um, from the replet interpreter. Okay, so the problem here is A and B are perfectly well defined, but the function the value is not defined, because I printed out here. And it says undefined, 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 but I can't seem to check that it's undefined. So let's go back to this and look for more. Um, 42 answers, really? Um, that's stupid, though. Um, so is this just equal, equal, equal? No, two equals, not three equals. <laughs> it's been nearly... Um... Void zero? Come on. What the fuck is wrong with JavaScript? Oh yeah, everything. I'm okay with the fact this throws an error, but for me it's just like running over, it keeps running. That's the problem. Uh, at the very least it should, I mean if it crashes with an error, that's one thing. Um... And this doesn't need to be in quotes. Let's see if this works. Although every time I experiment with this, it's we're getting running. There we go. 
There we go. All right. Works for me. I don't know why equal 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 didn't work, but fuck it. And this just returns bad binary search, so that's okay. Okay. So we'll worry about why that's happening later. Um. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. So find heliacal date. Okay, this is the, the these are the values that of i and j, which is what we wanted. That's good. Okay. Um, let's star it's star info, but we're not gonna say it. Star info. Um RA is RA of the star. Deck is deck of the star. Latitude. Latitude is a given latitude. And here's where the altitude is the only thing that really changes. It's gonna be star else. J. Okay. Uh. Uh, I'm gonna have a problem how, with how to store this, but I think I can deal with it. Um, so now we want to we want to create a function that, given a day, returns. We want to figure out where it's going to be, yeah, how far it is from the star info data that we want. So this is going to be um, oh fuck. Because we need it for both rise and set and maybe even for noon. Um, motherfucker. I don't think we'll need it for new builds. Do this. Um, 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 yay! We can have a triple nested loop. Very excited. K equals zero to more an eve length. There's just two of them, but you know, whatever. Um, K plus plus. Okay. Um. And the altitude here will be. Uh, I think that one we can get. Sun outs. Yeah, that we're fine. This is going to be a freaking ugly function. Let me do this magic to it. Um, so what we want to return is the sun info of lat light minus... Um, it's not going to be dot rise. It's going to be... Morn Eve of K, and I don't think I can put that as a dot because it is, uh, maybe I can. And do I need to say, no, I think this is fine. You can use this for, uh, for properties. And the alt is going to be sun alts. Um, no, the alt is going to be, yeah, sun alts of I minus. Um, star dot star of morn eve of k. Boy, what's interesting is I'm not actually sure what I just said. Um, right, and that's the function. Ooh, that is one badass function. Okay. I don't think this is going to run. I think there's a problem with it. Redeclaration of let res. Yeah, that's that's not the problem, but... Um, 
So we have res over here, and we do not return res. That's fine. This is okay. Um, where am I? Do I have like a let let res somewhere? Um, and it's good that it's telling me the line number of everything, which it is not, of course. This is function. Well, I guess we'll look for let res. I don't. Um, this should not, in theory, conflict with the other res, uh, because the other res is inside a function, but it might, so we'll just call it fu, which could stand for anything. Oh. Um, do I have these all closed up correctly? I do not. So this is the function, this is k, this is j, this is i. Star info is not defined. Uh, am I do I'm, am I not capital case? I'm not capital casing correctly. Alrighty. Way to suck. Okay. This should not be taking this long. I'm not even doing the binary search yet. What's wrong? I'm going to stop it from here because I want to get some error messages out of it. One more time. If Replit won't stop it, I will. Well, you know, Firefox will. You have been stopped. Okay. Not fun. Um. I'm going to go ahead and download this and push it to Git because I want to, I actually, because I want to change it. And I want to save this, even though it sucks. Um, it sucks. Okay. And now we can. We don't need to define any of this stuff anymore. I mean, I'm not going to return anything out of this, but that's that's probably okay. And I don't think we need to have this stuff here because we don't need to be testing. Well, actually, this might be useful, so I don't have to hit a button to test. And all this crap, it's probably useful, I don't, you know. Um, but it's going to go away anyway. Alright, so now... Um, uh, okay, and I guess we're going to add another test here um, for binary search. Um... So here, if A and B are too close, um, I should probably not hard code this 10 to the minus 6th. Now in this case, it's not an error. We just want to kind of return the last value that we had, which is mid. Okay. Now, let's see if that stops the fucking infinite fuck fuck. Doesn't appear to have stopped the infinite fuck fuck. And now it's actually, it looks like it's even more frozen. Yep, this time we're not waiting for you. Okay. So somewhere we're entering into an infinite loop. And that the only thing I can imagine is bin search. Um, it's like the only place we could be entering into a loop. Uh, so what can we check here? Oh. 
I mean, we could put a counter in here and say if it's, you know, if, you, if it's gone more than n times, um, just stop it, so. Okay, do we need this test here anymore? I don't think we do, actually. I don't think that's a problem, but I don't think we need it. Um, all right. This is ugly. Don't do this. Now it's not Java, and it is, by the way, the word is recur eons. Some people pronounce it recursions, which is okay, but all right, let's see what this does. Oh my god. Now see this, this should have worked. So the only thing I can think of is that the error is occurring somewhere else. Um, this is a global variable, I'm not touching it. Alright, well, what, are, what else are we doing that might be causing this problem? Uh, do stuff doesn't call itself. Hmm. Okay. Now, let me just try this right away. Um, if this works, that means obviously the problem is in bin search somewhere. Okay, interesting. The problem is not in bin search. Because bin search now it returns instantly. Alrighty. I don't think there's any other function that freaking calls itself though. Uh, let's see. Find heliacal. So what are we doing here? Fu equals find heliacal date. Well, let's see if this is the problem. I mean, uh, maybe find heliacal date's doing something really stupid, or maybe I've created an array loop that's really much bigger than. It. Okay, there we go. All right. So maybe I've just created an array loop that is that is insanely huge, and let me see if I have done this. Sun outs. These are teeny tiny freaking arrays. Star info. I'm just defining a freaking fun. All right, you know what? I don't think this is going to work, but uh, this might bring us closer to where the problem is. And it might not. I don't care. All right. Yep, still unhappy. Okay. The only thing I thought is maybe I'm redefining I, J, or K in here, which would be really bad. Um, nope, we're going to stop it. Aha! Yep. This here is the problem. I am waiting for J to change into something that actually... I need to stop this. Um, th this should be K, of course. So that's a pretty ugly mistake on my part there. Now let's try it. Because uh, J will be... Because J, I guess, can never advance because K is going to always be... Because uh, I never advance... Yeah, because I... Well, actually, I don't know why that didn't work. But let's let's pretend we don't care. Alrighty, there we go. Nope, still going for some reason. Um, why the hell is K... Okay, hang on. Something is very, very wrong. Like K equals zero. K is less than the l length of this array, which is two. Somehow, K is being redefined as a very big number. 86,400 to be, which is the number of seconds in a day. So, I mean, there's, there's some... Okay, have I really done this? Did I use the letter K somewhere without putting a let in front of it so it's now global? Um, I probably did, yeah. I mean, that's not, that's not something, that's something, that sounds like me. Alright, let's see if we can find that. 
Okay, that's a let, so that's a private variable, so that's fine. Alrighty. Um, I can't imagine that this variable is being used for anything else, but we'll just call it time day instead. And if this fixes it, this will be fucking magic. Okay, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. K is going between one. Okay, good. Why is J getting back to zero? Huh, huh, huh. That's not what I want. basic frickin' triple loop. Alrighty, I'm gonna put a next here just to make sure the loop itself isn't fucked. This should go very quickly through all of them. Um, okay, that literally, that loop does literally nothing. Alright. I, J, K. So, zero, zero, one. Um, after that should be zero, zero, wait, 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 zero, zero, zero should be the first one. Okay, I'm confused. Why is K getting set to one? All right, let me... I'm not even defining K anywhere else, right? So what what is this what is this garbage? Then it should be zero one Okay, this would make my life difficult. Uh we'll log them one at a freaking time as you enter each subloop. Fuck with that, you fucking piece of fuck fuck. Got a little bit angry there, and I'm glad I did. And here we can say... Okay, so now... We should see what your fucking problem is. Okay, clearly that, that made it really unhappy. Wow. Uh, any help from the peanut gallery? Okay, I zero, K, I zero, and then just freeze for fucking forever. Now the obvious thing to do here would be to um, would be to rename one of the loop variables to see if that's the problem. Uh, I don't want to do that, um, but I'm going to. Well, actually, hang on. I seems to be okay. And J seems to get really fucked up somehow. So J is now going to be known as M. I might make these all like, and so we want you to do that. Not helpful. Wait. Okay, so the, the problem might be with actually with, uh, with I. Let's go and stop this. Um, and the problem might be with the replit itself, of course. There's always a uh, possibility that uh, that replit isn't working properly. So now we're going to have N, M, and K, which is kind of, we've kind of sort of reversed things now. 
Okay, so n goes from 0 to this, m goes from this, we're logging it runaway. Okay. Now there's a kind of, no, let's see. Hmm. What's sort of weird here is that n should be printing first, then m, then k. Unless, do I need to do a next, next, next here? Um, I mean, that next to then the k loop. All right. I'm going to comment out the rest of this freaking, well, the rest of this freaking code. Which apparently you don't have the function for. But. Uh, and I'm going to be careful here because now I've got to, I've got to do my parentheses correctly. Um, okay. So nk, nm, end m, end n, end function. See, the problem is it's still running for some reason. That's what bugs me. Uh, I guess we could do an end of each loop. Uh, well, let's just do it here. Okay, so it never reaches that. Okay. Now we're gonna keep we're gonna keep doing this until we fix it or I die. Probably the 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 latter. So this is just two. Now we're using hard numbers. Let's see you fuck with that. Yep, you can still fuck with it. Okay. Because we don't actually need any of this code either, all you do now is a for loop. Your entire fucking existence is a for loop. I'm stumped. Any help from the peanut gallery here? Do you think? Okay, hang on. Does listen.js do anything? I don't think so. Oh, wait, 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 it does. It does do stuff. But all it does is call find heliacal date and do other, like, ooh. Hang on. We still are calling uh, helical date of star. Um, I mean, getting rid of this will work. I mean, it better work. Oh, cool. Still broken. Uh, this definition, this definition, okay. Okay. Um, Alrighty. Okay. So is this just in a, uh, So this isn't actually stuck, it's just maybe waiting for other stuff to happen. Okay. So this is just the normal sort of uh, loop that JavaScript goes, the listen loop that JavaScript goes into. Um,
but for some reason this loop is not going through. We get zero, 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 and then we get a next, which maybe is not what I meant. Let's just do nothing, well, let's just console log, hello. So I'm going to stop it and rerun it, rerun the loop. Oh, here we go. That was kind of strange. Um, all right. Will we do it? Hit the button. Okay, so it was it just like something they were doing on their side? So now it's putting in the right order. Hmm, after hang on, is it? N zero zero zero. Hello. K is now one. Hello. M is now one. K is zero. M. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that's fine. K is equal to one. N is one. Yeah, I think we're okay now. Yeah. In fact, let's go ahead and make this. Um, So I don't know what was wrong. Maybe it was replet itself. I mean, if it is, then it's sort of bad because it cost us some time that I didn't enjoy wasting. Uh, so usually I do enjoy wasting time with you guys. Alright, push, do stuff. Run code that doesn't exist anymore. Brilliant. Stop. Saved. Yo mama. Whoa. Play. I is not, well, you're right. I is not defined. It is now called, um, in fact, neither is J for that matter. It's N, M, and K. NMK, New Mexico Kids. I don't know if that's what it means. I mean, it could mean that, I guess. Yep, looking good now. Okay, well, that was exhausting. Um, oh, and I missed my Pomodoro. Uh, that's not good. Um... Let's see. Uh, and it's almost time for the next one, so we'll skip this this one. Not a problem. Um, let's see. Now we have this, 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 and we now want to slowly build up what we had before, which is... Uh, can we get rid of this? Get rid of this. Um, and and now we can hopefully log. I guess one uh, backup plan I should have is if Replit is misbehaving. I can in theory download the code to my own to the VM and run it from there, and that actually should work because it's identical. Um, and if that works, then we know that it's it's a uh, issue with uh, with Replit and not with my code. And this is just to make sure we're getting stuff uh, the way we want it. Assuming we can spell. Yep, looks good. Looks good, very good. Okay. So now, maybe let's actually do something that's useful in here. Um, oh, actually, we have code that was commented at that we can bring back now. 
carefully. Okay, so here's star info, blah, 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 star out of j. And this function is this. Now let's see if this is the thing that didn't run earlier. Let's see if this does run now. Yeah. I do need a... Um, yes, I do. Okay. And I'm going to ask this to format it just so it gets really ugly. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm never going to live down the fact that I changed all my variable names. J is now M. K remains the same. Um, sun outs of N instead of I. Uh, morn Eve minus star morn Eve. Except this is now called time day anyway. And since it's working, um, kind of again, let's go ahead and push it. And I will go ahead and download a, a much more importantly, download a zipped version for myself. And Pomodoro time, I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Um, so now we get to the ugly part of doing a binary search. Oh, this is the end of this function. To see where f is zero. But let's see if I've written any code for that. I, have, I don't think I have actually. Yeah, I haven't. I never got this far. Okay. Okay, so we have this function. I'm like 99% sure something's going to go wrong here, but let's go ahead and do this. Let res. Oh, we already have res defined, sorry. Let, um, I don't want to call it temp. Uh, but well, for right now we'll call it temp, and we'll change it. It's probably going to be like res array array, res nmk or something. In fact, can I do that? That's going to look really ugly. Um, actually, it might be okay. Hang on. I was thinking the values would be really ugly, but anyway. Didn't search. Okay, why aren't you keep why isn't bin search a function? The function will be f. The a will be zero. 
and the B will be 360 whatever. Well, let's make 366. It'll get found somewhere in there. Um, and then we can console log M. No, it is N first, N's first. And in fact, that should be true here too. For consistency. If this doesn't crash and burn, I'll be surprised. Or, uh, yeah, it'll probably just give me errors. Ooh, okay, no errors so far. Um, res n is undefined. Oh, I can't do it this way because it's a... Um, it's n it needs to be an array, which I'm not sure I want to make it a three-dimensional array. So, we can, however, um, do this. Fake array by using commas. Fake multidimensional array using commas. I know you love it. This end is undefined. Oh, sorry. And I guess we'll have to do that here, too. Um, uh, I don't think you can double... Yeah. I don't think you can double quote... In, you can double quote inside of a quote... inside of a back quote. So I think we just need to do this. And then we'll just put this as temp here. Okay. Even with all the even with all the garbage that we still need to do, I think this isn't going to work. Uh, it's definitely not going to work if I don't put in values. So I might at some point want to default the values. And I think the return fu is because we decided it's going to not do anything. Okay. But that wasn't bad, actually. And I'm this close to... Oh, cool. Uh, that probably is not what I wanted. Hang on. Okay, I am going to have to default these values because I'm getting tired of typing this in. Bad binary search? Okay, that, that's fine. Um, too many recursions for me. Okay, okay. That's much better than what we were getting a few minutes ago. Um, okay. we can safely actually log the values of FA and FB without having to go any further. Okay. Um, oops, it's a function, not a array reference. And it's not Mathematica. Okay. And I think I think we can even do this before we do that. All right. It'll still fail. Okay, now I'm getting tired of this. Let's go ahead and put in some uh, default values. So the star will be... Oh, you know what? I'm going to make the star denim. I think that's just a kind of a nice default. Not necessarily for production. And this value will always be... There's a mistake I just realized that I made. A big one. Um, I forgot to convert everything to degrees or... You know... Oh, actually, did I? Did I, did I, did I? Maybe I didn't, actually. Um, 
Okay, so we'll make Den of the, the sort of special case here. Oh, actually, we can just use this for right now. We don't even have to um, bother to run it because we, okay. Undefined, 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 undefined. That's not good at all. Okay. Let's see why it's undefined. Oh yeah, because this we only want the um, the right. Oh no, we have that. We have this right here. Time day. Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, I don't know if that's ever gonna really uh, really work. Um, So let's go ahead and this this might actually be okay. So we should be able to, you know, the star info should be giving us back some pretty good stuff. So and I just realized it's gonna return an object. But you know, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh it's not what I wanted out of star, but okay. I think we might be able to fix it by doing this. It, it's different when it's interpolated and not interpolated. I I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's true. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Noon. I'm going to have to make it a little bit bigger, I guess. Rise, set, uptime. Rise, set, uptime. It's going to be a little bit different for when it's re refracted. Okay, so now, before we try to define this crazy function here, Let's see if we can uh, see if we can console log it for one thing. Um, so we'll start with sun info lat lat d zero because that's where we think we're having the issue. Alt sun alt n should be well defined. Um, yeah, let's just do that one first. Um, and instead of being super clever with the little back ticks, comes along. Here comes the sun, little darling. Here comes the sun. Do 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 do. All right. Uh, missing blah blah after property list. That's probably true. Hang on. Let let out. Close this. And I think I only need one. Parentheses, parentheses, there we go. F is not defined. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Um, these are all in um, radian, so that actually might be okay. Um, However, do I ever convert these things to radians before sending them to star info, which I'm pretty sure does expect radians? Yeah, let's see. Let's see where in this uh, function I actually do it. Oh, wow. No, that's not what I meant to do, though. I meant to do it from replit. Okay. So there I convert replits. Um, so there I convert, uh, you know, the stars info to that, so that's good, that's good. Um, however, in the, um, in the heliacal date, these numbers are actually, um, should be converted to degrees. Not th these, obviously, but okay. So, got to be very careful here, because I do not, actually, I think I can get away with this. Hang on. Um... Uh, let's see, what's the, what's the most out one? Let's sun out equal sun out of n. Um, and we can do that with star out equal star out 
of m of 180 times an f pi. And let okay, we don't need to do anything with the, the last one. The last one's actually what we need. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what this does. F is not defined. Um, okay, 985. Oh, Okay. Yeah, we have not actually, because we, we commented at the line that defines f, so we, we're not quite here yet. So let's go ahead and comment all this crap out. Oh, did I miss another Pomodoro? I think I did. That's okay. We'll get to it. Wow. Have I skipped two in a row? Yeah, not good. Okay. So it says sun, noon, rise, up time. Um, so in the vernal equinox, yeah, see the rise and set time Oh, actually, I need to run it again, don't I? Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, noon is zero is correct. This I'm pretty sure this number should be like pi over two or something, uh, or pi. So that's probably not good. Let me see what this number is. Conf okay. Oh, this is really good. This is really good. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, so we probably need to figure out, you know, where we're doing all this stuff. But uh, so let's go ahead and console log n m and k. And I think only. Um, oh. Yeah, we went to the trouble of converting it and then not using the conversion. Um, that's, that was smart. Okay, so here we're going to be using the radian converted value. Uh, sun out can take on, I think, only three positions. Minus six, uh, negative 34 minutes. Okay, let's do this now. No, of course, star lat is not defined. I meant to say star alt. Okay, no errors. That's nice. Um, now, okay, this actually seems reasonable for Civil Twilight uh, on the uh, on the um, on the equinox. This seems okay. And the pi is definitely okay for, okay, this one looks a bit weird. There should be no case where that number is less than pi. So that's a little weird. So pi is for the geometric case, 2, 1, 0, when, um, let's see. So when it's zero, that should be the highest value. And I totally effed that up. That's a minus. That's why it wasn't working. Okay, so now we're getting a lot better results here. We're very happy. Uh, let's go ahead and get and um, I'll go ahead and download the zip, which is much more important. And slightly happy. That's all we know. Okay, so now we're getting some uh, decent data out of the sun. Now, what we actually want, though, is... Um, let me first really quickly... Hopefully I haven't redefined temp somewhere. 
let me define temp to be this value here. And then we can just console log that along with everything else. Okay, and then we're going to actually try to get the value we need out of it, which is either the rise or set time. Shiny. Um, This should give it to us a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. All right, noon, blah, blah, time. Okay, all good, all good. Uh, but now, of course, we don't actually want all the entire thing. We just want the one value out of it, which is the uh, the rise of the set, depending on the value of uh, time day. Time day of K. And if this doesn't break, I'll be shocked. I hope I haven't, no, I haven't misscrolled my chat, have I? I mean, there is nobody else talking. Okay. That's good, that's what I've taught, nobody else is talking, which is normal. Okay, now... Very nice. Very nice. Awesome, so we're, we're doing well now. Um, so now we're going to create their function. And let's see... Um... Here's where it's all going to blow up, boys and girls. Okay, I should be able to define a function that does this. Takes, um, in fact, if I'm clever, why did I do that? Undo, undo, and I should do a cut and paste. Okay, so the function is going to um, take a value. Pomodoro, be back in a minute. And I'm back. Okay, so now we have this function here that, um, that, let's see, this might be a little bit too much. 
that returns the difference between Uh, the so the sun's info in the sense of you know rising or setting civil twilight minus the stars info um, which of course if it's zero then they're equal I'm a little bit not ready to do that yet so hang on one sec and we will come at this code out for now or we won't Am I forgetting how to comment code in JavaScript? Have I gone back to my days of Pascal? Yep. All right. Um, so right now we just want to have that return the info. We're not going to do any sort of subtraction with it. Um, so that. So then, the th if this is correct, then I should be able to also just console log um, f of zero because um, it takes one argument and that should give us the same results. It probably won't, but you know. Ooh, shiny. And I also meant to console log temp, but you know. All right, let's see what's wrong here. So sun info. Well, let's actually see what this is. Let's see what we're getting back from that. Undefined. That's that's groovy. So day zero, altitude is sun out, which we have defined. Yep, we got it. Um, and then once we get that sun info, we extract from it the time of day thing, which might be the thing that's killing us. So let's do this. Yeah, not looking good for you, Mr. F. Um, oh, oh, oh. Mm, no, alt is going to be sun alt. Because we've... That shouldn't have broken it, but... but okay. Because we've defined sun alt very specifically now. And this is getting so horribly ugly that even I don't like it anymore. Yeah, let's don't go crazy there. Alright, let's see what this does. Okay, cool. It's not it's not going completely bananas. And B A N A N A S. Bananas. Okay, I don't know why I did that. Okay, and so now what we want to extract from it is either the rise or the set time, depending on um, the value of time day of, of k, which should be this. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. So we now have f behaving the way we want to almost um, so now all we need is the to subtract off this information this is you know the sun's rise and set time now we need to compare it to the stars rise and set time and we actually have that um, as we just call it star don't we um, Okay, so now on the zeroth day, um, wait, oh yeah, f of zero. On the zeroth day at the vernal equinox, um, how different are you from Deneb? And that's, I don't actually know what that, that value is, but, uh, I guess that's pretty far. I don't really know, to be honest. We, we're going to have to do a little bit more here. Okay, so now, of course, the whole point of creating F was to... Um, 
and we're obviously not going to use this as our final result. Um, bin search, F is F, A is 0, B is 366. Why am I, am I in one too deep or something? Okay. Um, and so when console log, temp2, this is not going to work. Temp2, to too many recursions for me. Um, yeah, okay. That's actually okay. Um, oh. I guess here we're going to have to say to get rid of all the other freaking debugging that I'm doing. Bin search. Zero three sixty six. Um, um, minus four and one. Those are perfectly valid parameters. Um, all right. So instead of trying to do this in a big loop, I mean, which we will need to do eventually, let's go ahead and. Um, Let's go ahead and just do the zero, 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 and then kill it, and then once we get that working, we can restore, uh, we can restore balance to the, I don't know if that last is a, is it break? It's break. Last is a pearlism. So do it once, and that's, did that really just do it once? Break, oh, you don't really, I need a break, break, break. I don't think I can actually do that. So instead, again, there is no die command in JavaScript, but once it hears a command that it doesn't like, it will. That's still quite a bit, isn't it? Uh, it'll it'll just stop processing. Okay, this looks good. This actually looks like we're looking at one binary search here. And, oh, you know what, 10 might actually be, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, too many recursions for me, we might have uh, been excessively aggressive there. Um, and we do need to get rid of this line, so I'll put a... Can't be global. Now we might actually, inside of bin search, pass a count variable um, after the first time, so we know what the depth is, the recursion depth is, and if it gets to be too big, uh, we could just, you know, return too many, too many recursions. Uh, but not, 10 is not going to be enough. Alrighty. So bin search all this crap, and then temp comes out as 258.68. Um, which says 258 days after the vernal equinox, um, these two things will rise at the same time. Because, oh, actually, hang on. Oh, the way I have this, this means 258 days after the vernal equinox, the refracted star will rise at the same time as civil twilight. Boy, that sounds interesting. All right, let's see if we can, um, uh, I mean, we could just at this point, you know, add that to the, um, that to the vernal equinox or whatever, uh, but let's clean it up a little. Let's, okay, hang on. Let's see if we can get this working all the way. Ooh. So we still do get into too many recursions, which should not be happening. Oh, yeah, because I have a global variable here. This is now, um, every time bin search is called, this variable increments. Um, so I'm just going to hope that it, we don't get into this situation. 
Or we can make that a non-global variable that gets sent each time and incremented each time. Um, for each recursion, which would actually also be a good thing. Okay. All right. So attempt two, attempt two, we have uh, bin search, blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's, as things get better, as things improve, we will do less and less uh, debugging. Where the hell is, okay, here we are. So let's get rid of that. Let's see what we have now. Um, okay, so I guess we don't need to be doing this anymore either. Um, we can still compute temp, we're just not going to log it anymore. Okay. Uh, okay, we're still getting an F colon from somewhere. An effing colon, man! Oh, yeah. Alright, let's just see some temp two. Oohs. Okay. We lost something that we didn't mean to lose. Um, yeah, we did. We actually did one attempt too. Okay, boys and girls, let's see what we're getting. That's very nice. Um, I have no idea what. Okay, so this is the number of days after the the uh, the vernal equinox. Now I'm going to. Th I mean, it's different every year. I'm going to put it between March 22nd and March 23rd, meaning the midnight that ends March 22nd and begins March 23rd. Um, and then we are going to um, add this number of days to it, but we're only going to be interested in the, um, in the month and day part. And I'm going to do it for the year 2021, because 2020 is a leap year. Um, I've got to be careful here. I don't, uh, too much precision is going to be unnecessary because you know the vernal equinox moves around enough that uh, that trying to find an exact day and time is going to be silly. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to um, look at JavaScript's date library. I'm hesitant. I, I'm worried that the date library won't be very good. Um, I'm not sure that I'm ready to abandon it though. So let's take a look at JavaScript state library real quick. Um, so hopefully we'll get something from no wow. Deve there we are. Develop developer mozilla.org is for me the best. Um, date format constructor. Construct a new object. Uh, date now, date parse, okay. Oh, parsing, it's strongly discouraged, okay. Um, let's see. Date, get date, okay. So, okay, that's not how I want to do it. Um, number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970 UTC. Okay, so the constructor, can we give the constructor a freaking number? Apparently not. Set the date, set the full year, set the minutes, set the seconds. Um, okay. Okay, so we can do all of this stuff. Now, as always, we're going to try to break it. Okay, so inside this loop, we're going to just very quickly say that date equals new date, and I want to set um, interesting. Oh, so they lied. There's more than one constructor. Now 
let's see if that the odds that that's going to work are very low. Uh, let's find out though. Invalid date. Yep, I knew it. Uh, let's let's take a look though at what the uh, potential constructors are. Year, month. Optional date. Oh, date colon. So that's literally the only thing I did wrong there. If this works. Otherwise, I did everything wrong. Uh, doesn't like it. Um, huh. And so there's five constructors here. Okay, value string number, var date. Ah, come on. Loop around. Um, year, number, month, number. Date, question mark. So I think that means it's an optional parameter. So in theory, all I need is a year and a... Oh, yeah, and th that's an object, so... Pass it an object who has a um, year and month set. Alright, so let's... Let's try to use these instructions to create a date. If that doesn't work, we'll not use the instructions. Invalidate. Okay, fuck you. So apparently we have to create the fucking date like this. Pomodoro, back in two minutes. And I'm back. Okay. Well, let's see if that gives us... That'll give us, like, a blank date. Oh, that gives us the current date. That's actually kind of nice. Um... So I guess I have to go with... Well, actually, this should be able to tell me what these uh, parameters are, because should be able to do a completion. I say that as though it's actually going to happen. Dot. Set. Ooh. Full year. Okay. I mean, this seems like it's unnecessary, but... I guess we've got to do it this way, we've got to do it this way. Because JavaScript sucks. Alright, let's see if that brings us to where we need to be. Interesting. For some reason it seems to think this time is... Now, is set month going to be, I think, I guess the zeroth month is January, so this is going, this is good, this is good, this is good. Um, I guess we can set the time, too. Let's 
said seconds. God damn it. Why can't I just set Unix time? You oh, set milliseconds. I can. Okay, that's probably the better way to do this. Set milliseconds. I god, I hope that's like... So if I set the milliseconds to zero, we should see the, the epoch. And we do not. Unfortunately, that only sets the milliseconds part of the date, not the whole date. Let's see if we can find something that's... Uh, and this is JavaScript, so I don't even know why I'm looking. Um, okay. Constructor is just a date. Length, that doesn't... no one cares. Now, parse un... Um... <coughs> Okay. Get date, get milliseconds, get minutes, get month, get seconds, get time. Aha. So set time might be our magic bullet here. Ah, there we go. Still sucks, but um No. The real question is, why can't I just, like... Anyway, let's do this, see if this works, then I'll try doing it the other way. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Awesome. So why can't I do... that? Because I can't. Alright, fuck it. Alright, so all we need to do here is find the millisecond time for... Um, Oh, I'm so tempted to actually take the real time of the vernal equinox. Uh, you. Vernal equinox 2021. All times are mountain time. I don't want fucking mountain time, you fucking piece of shit. But that should be fine. So that's 10.37 uh, a.m. Oh, crap. Are we on daylight time by then? Let's find out. Um, actually, that's not going to... So, I guess I do need it UTC. What part of UTC didn't you motherfuckers understand? It's limited to our not wonderful, but oddly enough, more wonderful. And you know, you have to suck pretty bad before. Um, is that a PDF? That would not be. Oh, that's a URL that Google can't unfortunately screw up for us. Oh, it is a PDF. Oh, uh, I don't like PDFs. Must include Vernal. Oh my fucking god. Okay, apparently we're going to have to use it in PDF form. Life just gets worse and worse. Alright. What do we got here? Events, screenshot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you download it? It didn't end up in my home directory, did it? Nope. Please shoot me. <coughs> we'll just save it as URL to make things confusing. And is that a... Ooh, that is not a PDF document. However... It does lead us to a PDF. That still doesn't really seem like a big enough thing to be a PDF, but who cares? <sighs> Why did it take so long to get to this point? Um, 
Oh, so we are on daylight time then, actually, because Eastern's only four hours behind um, UTC. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to echo this so I don't forget it. I hate my life. Did I actually close it? I did close it, didn't I? Must control anger. So I should just be able to cut and do that. Now, I should just be able to motherfucking cut and paste this into the terminal so I won't fucking forget it. Yep, yep. Now I can safely close you, you piece of shit. Not events, but the PDF. The PDF is the work of the devil. Uh, it stands for Portable Devil Format. So everyone should, um, should stop using it. So this should, if I'm doing this correctly, give me the March 20th, 9.37 a.m. in Unix time. Cutting and flip and pasting. And of course that's times a thousand because it's milliseconds, Unix uses seconds. Uh, that's looking pretty good to me. Alrighty. Um, but now, if we're being clever, <laughs> I am so funny. That's the, the vernal equinox, and we want to add to it uh, temp2, which is in, in, yeah, it is actually in days. So times 86,400, and let's we'll see what that gives us. Sorry, 86,400 times a thousand, because we're in milliseconds. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. I wish I knew what these results meant. Um, and then, we are only interested in the month and day. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that should be pretty easy to do. Uh, so the get, get month will just give us a number, but I'm hoping there's a way to get like a nice formatted version. I don't, I don't know why I, I'm hoping that. Um, get UTC, blah, 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 blah. Hey, can we format this piece of shit? Oh, here we go. Um, okay. Oh, so there's a little warning by the function I need to use. This API has not been standardized. Turns a string. Okay. Oh wait, you can do this? All right, that's... Oh, so they do have to be arguments in a list. They don't have to be objects. That is bizarre. Except now I don't even care because uh, we just need to format the bloody thing. Um, so the function I'm looking for is called strf time. Let's see. And I guess we need to look at what the various string options are. Parse, don't use it. Now the question is, does to date string take options that let me decide how I want to print it? And the answer is, that would make it too useful. To, to locale, to locale format, to locale string, no, not quite to string. Let's see if we get some options there. Oh, fuck you. Um, are all, those are all the conversion methods? I guess they are. Um, to string? Um, alright. I don't even know why I bother to do this. What we really want, of course, is 
Uh, Sturf time JavaScript. There isn't a Sturf time, but maybe there is. Yep. Sturf time is a is a time formatting. Um, um, I just said, oh my fucking god, in a whisper. Because apparently, I guess two locale string is, is allowed. Uh, that's not one of the functions that's... Well, what the hell is this? De deprecated? Um... Okay, okay, we can do this. So, console log... We have to convert it to locale date string. Options. ENUS, of course, is the only real uh, thing that exists. Okay. Okay, and now we should be able to take. Let's just see what this does. Let's just make sure we haven't fucked it up too bad yet. That's not bad, actually. Um, and so now... The options, let's see how they do it over here. Um, uh, fuck. Um... Alrighty. Month long. But can I get rid of stuff? Month long day numeric. We're getting there. Where the hell are we? We were getting there. Okay, so month long day numeric numeric. And let's run the sucker. That might be a string. Actually, something like this. And this might be date instead of day. Ooh. That's nice. It doesn't put anything else in that I don't ask for. Um, we're definitely getting there. And I think I want the month not as a number, but as like a mar. Very nice. Okay, once again, I'm going to have to um, download this as a zip file. A and... Uh, checkpoint. I think I'll just call it checkpoint. Hit and push. So, so now what we're going to be saying here is, um, now let's get this. We probably don't need this anymore. Um, now let's actually get, um, you know, what we're actually doing here, the stars out and the sun out. So we c then we can run some tests, actually. Sun out. Um, I guess we can do this. And the sun out is going to be just sun out, because I think we declared it to be like that. Star will be star out. And the only thing we really need is time, which is going to be, I think we didn't, time day k. And, of course, we do need to put that in little bracy thingies. Okay. So now, if this is, does this correctly, we should be able to run some tests. Um, that's probably not what I meant to do. Um, 
Oh, this is star altitude reading. So actually, what I think I want is just. Um, I guess I could get this in degrees, but that's probably not really great either. Well, it's probably better than what we have here. So let's uh, let's see. Um, yeah, actually, let's just go ahead and print N and M, and we will figure it out ourselves, which at some point we have to do anyway. Okay. So what this is saying is, let's go find our little thing with Bobby, our little arrays, not those arrays. Okay, so civil twilight, refracted star Deneb will rise at the same time at latitude 35 degrees. What is our latitude? Hang on, did I? Oh, right, right, because we're still actually using the, um, the fixed values from uh, listen.js. Or are we? Well, I guess we are. No. Sorry, from script.js, we still have a test down here that does this for... Uh, 35 degrees. Yes. 35.05 degrees, which is where I freaking live. So come find me. All right. Um, so this is for Albuquerque, essentially. Um, and we are now looking at star rises at the same time as civil twilight in the morning. So this is, this is what we're claiming is that day. All right, Pomodoro, and then we're going to use Stellarium. Be right back. And I'm back. And just because I'm bored, I'm going to check to see who's in chat right now. I'm thinking no one. Certainly would not want to subject anyone to this. Oh, hello. G I think GZA underscore might. I don't know who you are. So just say hello if you want to. Okay. So let's see if Stellarium... Um, says that on December 4th, Deneb rises when Civil Twilight is there. Oh, hello! Hello, hello, Beast120. Oh, Beastone! Beastone, I remember you. One of my favorite people. How are you doing? We're about to do something that may be considered cool, but probably is not. Assuming it works. Okay. I'm doing well as well. Thank you for asking. Oops. All right, one second here while I fix things up here. 
Okay. So now we're going to... I, I, at some point I need to save my freaking settings, but anyway. Um... Okay, so we're in Albuquerque. How do I save my freaking settings? Is there like a button down here that does that? Whoa! This is cool! I didn't know it... Older versions did not do this. Phenomena nomana. Uh, ephemeris? Graphs? Um... Nice! I did not know we had this. This is actually very useful, and it might actually give us what we need for the Jovian Moon Eclipse stuff. But I'll make a note to look at that, actually. Okay. Okay, so we... Okay, so now we need to frickin' stop time. Uh, let's find... Oh, I was trying to find out how to save my settings. And... Here we are. Save settings. Um... Alright, we could use the... Actually, if we did use this, this would be interesting because we could get our answers to be as accurate as as those. So how do I do this? I guess I need to give it some place where it can find DE431. So let me make a note there too on the other machine. Okay. Okay. So now that I've saved I think enough for right now, uh, let's go ahead and find Deneb. zoom out a little bit. I really, really don't like the fact that they're doing this. This is kind of stupid. I don't know if there's a way to turn it off either. Um, let's see. Um, God, no, not useful. Um, Right, so I'm trying to figure out how to turn off the frickin' annoying and useless background that they've decided to give us. Um, huh. Um, okay. That's interesting. So apparently this uses elevation. This is something of one of my projects, actually. Um, all right, so that's another thing we need to look at. Okay. And I, I keep getting distracted, so I think I need to get out of this, get to denim. Turn on the ground. Um, well, actually, let's turn on the atmosphere. Turn on the ground. Um, remember what the hell I'm trying to do. That's the hardest part. Well, the waiting is the hardest part, according to Tom Petty. But he's dead, so whatever. Um, oh, I, actually, I'm sorry. We're using the uh, browser version here. All right, December 4th should rise at the same time as Civil Twilight. Um, let's go ahead and go to December 4th. And... Oh, let's give it a little bit of more of a shot at doing what we need to do. Okay, and I guess we do not need ground. 
All right, so um, it's about seven degrees. Ooh, we are using refraction. Got to be careful. Uh, so we should be able to turn off refraction. I'm going to leave it on though. Let's watch it rise. Six, five, four, three, two, one. It's interesting. I mean, it looks like we're getting close to uh, the civil twilights. It's not looking too bad right now for our computation here. Okay, and it's risen the moment. Oh, the moment it rises, it gets to change its color. All right. So where is the sun at this point? And the sun is at uh, an alz. Okay, not great, but I mean it's, it's roughly correct. The star is rising at the same time as civil twilight occurs, given the accuracy of what we're doing, the, the, the in the inaccuracy of what we're doing. And that's sort of reasonable. Let's see what the next time that's predicted is. March twelfth says the sun Denim will set as civil twilight comes to an end. So let's let's go there. Okay. And so let's watch Deneb. It where is it at right now? It is at. Um, oh, it's really nice that it tells us when it uh, rises and sets in sidereal time here. And I think. And I. Th I think that actually never will change because um, because it's it, it's a fixed object in sidereal time. Um, but now I kind of wonder when the sun will set in sidereal time if it tells us. Almost exactly the same time. Very nice. In fact, I think it's literally the same time. One hour fourteen? No, one hour thirty-five. Uh, so that will be after the sun's down a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do it just for fun. And the altitude is 58 degrees. We need to go quite a bit. Oh, it's getting higher, higher, higher. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, okay. And it is going to... Okay, is that, does that mean it's set or what the hell does that mean? Or just changing color because the sun's setting? Okay. And I think the other, the refraction might not make such of a difference now that I think about it. Um, yeah. Then when we consider the star with, um, with refraction, it's just one day off from here. Um, March 11th, again, one day off. Um, now, n now this is different. November 27th is when the, s the star, um, let's see, sun is one. So refracted, yeah, refracted. Um, and the star is zero, meaning the star is also refracted. Um, so let me make sure my chat isn't scrolling. Okay, it's not. Um, so yeah, w the the, the um, refraction apparently doesn't have too much of an effect on well as we would sort of expect, it, except in like extreme cases. Okay, so November twenty seventh, and then um, refracted November twenty eighth. I mean, yeah, we're not really getting a whole bunch of difference here. Um, the difference between Civil and uh, and uh, ri and geometric rise is big enough that I, I think it's it's useful. So on November twenty, let's actually go directly to the set. On March seventeenth, does Den upset at about the same time as the sun does, allowing for a refraction? And let's find out. Oh, it's only four days later, so maybe it's not a huge deal. So now Denim is at an altitude of minus, so we need to go up a little bit, right, because the sun has already set now in this little demonstration. Uh, and honestly, I don't think we need to learn to make this calculation for us, but I think we're going to see exactly what we expect to see. 
uh, which is the sun's going to be much closer to rising or setting. And yeah, it's well, 50 minutes above the horizon, so it is. It has risen. Okay, I think now I have streamed for more than enough time. I mean, zero one minute is more than enough time. Two hours and 40 minutes. That is awesome. Thank you for watching the stream, and I may or may not be back later today.